What up, people? Happy, happy Saturday. Welcome to the Finance Rebel Show. I am Kamara Yellis, as y'all know, every Saturday, every Saturday we do our wealthy conversations. And this Saturday, we're going to talk about a couple of things. This Saturday, we're going to talk about Warren Buffett, his new portfolio that he built over there at Berkshire Hathaway. Talk about the markets, as we always do. Talk about these hearings. Um, somebody called and requested that we talk about the hearings the Robin Hood hearings. So definitely want to talk about those as well. Um, and talk to y'all. If y'all got any questions, just let me know. We'll definitely get to those kind of towards the end of the segment. But, 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 let me do this real quick. I didn't share this out anywhere. I've been like really, really bad about sharing these videos out. So I'm going to kind of try to do this on the fly. So just bear with me for a hot second. Let me see what I can do here. I right, got that. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. While we're chiming in, everybody go ahead and let me know who you are, where you're hailing from. And let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, today we're going to talk about Warren Buffett and what some of the moves that he made with his uh, with his uh, new portfolio. All right, that's not working. So listen, y'all, the internet don't want me to be great. <laughs> that's my answer for everything when I can't get it to work right. <laughs> internet don't want me to be great. So I and him, you're from the Berg. All right, Berg's in the, in the house. So what else is new? All right, that ain't going to work. Let's see here. Let's see here. All right, I'm going to just have to rock with y'all. Whoever's here is here. Berg is definitely in the building. Okay. Gas bag Benny. I like that. Gas bag Benny. <laughs> Fiali's here. You know, bless up to you as well, sir. Nothing but blessings. Blessings for everyone. Jose, how you doing, Jose? And, oh, Fiala, you're from Maine. Okay. <laughs> What's it like up there now? I know we getting plenty of cold weather down here in PA, in Philly. But I'm sure Maine probably got us beat. All right, so everybody knows today's topic is about Warren Buffett's new, new portfolio allocation. He sold some things off. He brought some things. So we're definitely going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about the Robin Hood trials or the, the um, GameStop trials that we talked about or that we saw this week down in Congress. What a joke. But we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Um, also, um, a few a few other things. I got some, some notes down here as well. And then I'm not going to stay on too long today, but if y'all got, if we have time for questions, um, we'll definitely do that. Okay, so Jeff Mills, you got dial up over in California. All right. Yeah, you need to upgrade, brother. Upgrade. Barry Henson, how are you, Barry? Happy, happy Saturday to you. And my brother Don Johnson is in the building. How you doing, sir? What's new? What's new? What's new? All right, so listen, everybody, you're watching the Finance Rebel Show. The Finance Rebel Show is a show that I do several times a week. I do at least two live streams a week, and then... You know, here and there, I'll try to sneak in either with a live stream or another video. But the whole show is about increasing the financial IQs of everybody that's here. All right. I try to make finance and money simple, easy and plain, simple, easy and fun. So we can all do it. We know finance and understanding of finance and education is a major drain on our community. So I'm trying to do my part to make it better by sharing some of the experiences and education of my over 20 plus years in financial services. So if you know anybody that's looking to learn about finance, that's looking to learn about money, stocks, taxes, overall personal finance, do me a favor, share this with them because the better we are informed in our community with, I'll say this, culturally relevant financial education, because it's not just enough to know about finance. It needs to be culturally relevant as well. Because when you don't have culturally relevant financial education, you get a lot of people that do a lot of goofy things, but 
that's just my take. But go ahead and share it with him. What's up, Rod? How you doing? How you been, brother? Thank you, man. Dope shirt. This shirt comes from my brother, uh, Coach Carter, Malik Carter. This is his shirt. All right, let's see. We got Kenneth Sean. How you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy every Saturday. All right, folks. So let's get to it. The S&P 500 closed 3906. All right, 3906. That's what it closed at. It was down this week by a little bit, by 0.71%, or a little under three quarters of a percent. All right, that's to be expected. Year to date, the stock market is still up. By four percent, so stock market still up, stock market still moving, so we're we're good to go. We're good to go. All right, oil, oil hit above sixty. It hit above sixty, but it fell back down. So it closed at fifty nine oh one. All right, so oil one barrel of oil is fifty nine dollars and one cents. All right, so oil week to date is down one point two percent. Okay, down one point two percent. Oil is still up though. Year to date, over 21, almost 22%. So we've seen oil go up. You know, I've talked about it every week. The markets are anticipating that travels want to start picking up um, because the vaccines are starting to get rolling. Um, we're, we're seeing a lot of that. So a lot of things are anticipated to be open. Still a little hesitant, but it looks like we are on the move. It looks like we are on the move. All right. Gold. Gold closed 1783. Now, y'all been paying attention to me. Y'all been rocking with me every week. Y'all know that gold started several weeks ago above 2000 bucks. So gold's down. Again, closed at 1783 on Friday. Was down 2.2% uh, week to date for the last five days. All right. And down 6.23% on the week. So again, down over 6% on the week. So, you know, people are starting to retreat out of gold. That's what it seems like. It seems like a new trend is forming where gold prices are going to start falling. I know everybody thought gold was going to continuously stay high, push past 2000, but it looks like there is a new trend starting to form. And that's okay. We know that everything goes in cycles. Part of the game, part of the game. What goes up must come down. But, the big number everybody's been talking about this week is the big B. That's right. The big B, the B word, Bitcoin. Bitcoin closed up above $57,000 this week. Okay. Again, above $57,000 this week. So all my Bitcoin investors, traders, miners are pretty happy these days. Let's see how long it lasts though. Let's see how long it lasts. All right. So, this week, all about Robin Hood. Robin Hood, GameStop, at a big trial at the House Financial Services Committee, okay? At the House's Financial Services Committee, chaired by Maxine Waters. Now, a lot of people kind of fight with me, disagree with me. I always tell people that politics and money or politics and wealth are linked. You can't separate the two. You need to understand them both or at least have some kind of grasp of them both. We are oftentimes, we always preach that uh, politics doesn't matter. The hell it don't. I mean, I think we can all see that it does just by going through what we went through these last four years with that lunatic, that orange monkey that was in the White House. So it all matters, y'all. It all matters. So be sure to stay up to date. But in particular, they were talking about what happened with GameStop. What happened with uh, AMC? What happened with Bed Bath and Beyond? How we saw those big prices. Well, let me back up. How we saw most of these losing companies, right, in terms of profits. Most of these companies that are losing money begin to have skyrocket stock performance for like that week, just that week. It wasn't long lasting at all. But they talked about it. Now I'm gonna tell y'all up front. I always hate watching these these committees, these meetings. Why do I hate them? Because I feel like the House Services Committee or the House Financial Services Committee should understand the sector through and through, and they don't. These folks don't have a clue. Now, it's chaired by Maxine Water. Auntie Maxine chairs that. 
I never forget watching um, the House Financial Services Committee in either 2009 or 2010 after the big crash. And I, and people, you know, they didn't know the difference between them, a broker and an investment advisor. If you are in charge of regulation and oversight of that industry, I feel like you should know everything about that industry already. What are you getting paid with taxpayer dollars for? I mean, it just it just boggles my mind that one, most people in Congress have no idea about economics, have no idea about finance, have no idea about money, except for the money that they're able to get a lot of times so they get away with doing insider trading. That's another conversation for another day altogether. But it just boggles my mind that these are the people that us, the citizens, vote in. These are the people that us, the citizens, vote in that keep them in, and they have no idea, no knowledge about what's going on. And so then we come to these hearings and they ask these questions, right, about what's going on. But they're always basic and fundamentary type questions. These are the questions y'all should already know. The staffers should have updated y'all on it. Y'all should have taken a continuing education course. Y'all should have taken a college course on it, but they never know. And so it's always frustrating watching these folks because it's like, what's the point? It's a farce. Now, if y'all remember what I was talking about what was going on with GameStop, because there is a point, y'all. If y'all remember what I was talking about what was going on with GameStop, I said, the powers that be aren't going to let this happen, right? And so this narrative that they were protecting the hedge funds is total BS. It's total nonsense. It's only been pumped up by people that really don't understand the regulatory side of the market. And if you don't really understand the regulatory side of the market, I would say that you really don't understand the market at all. Because you got to understand the whole thing, right? It's like making a cake. You got sugar and you got eggs, but if you don't have flour, you won't have a cake. You just got eggs and some sugar. So you need the whole thing in order to understand it. Then you need to understand the the consistency and the ration, the right the ratios that you need in this cake for it to taste good, for it to be right. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. And again, I just don't understand why these people don't understand this but it is what it is um it is what it is so anyway maxine water said that um hedge funds so she's going to start looking into hedge funds hedge funds have used short selling short selling as a predator i made a note about it right um the long once right she wants to target uh hedge funds for their short selling she called it predatory well, if you follow the markets at all, short selling is not predatory. It's just not something that you hear about all the time because it's more of an advanced topic. Every day when we go home and when we listen to the news, they say, oh, the Dow Jones went up today or the S&P 500 went up today. They never talk about short selling. And just real short, real quick, just so everybody's on the same page, you can make money in the stock market when stocks go up and you can make money in the stock market when the stocks go down. You make money when the stocks go up, that's called going long, making money going long. If you are sophisticated enough, you can make money when stocks go down, and that's when it's called shorting. So that's the whole thing. I don't want to run through the whole thing, but I do want you all to understand that, right, as we go forward, that you can make money when the stock is up, when the market's down, both ways. Um, But it's clear that these people really don't study the market, and when you really think about it, hedge funds aren't really predatory when it comes to short selling. They're just making money when the market goes down on certain stocks. Now, the market's filled with buyers and sellers. What dictates that a stock or the market overall will go up or down? The the proportion of buyers and sellers, right? So if you got more buyers in the market, you're going to see higher stock prices. If you have more sellers in the market, you're going to see lower stock prices. It's really that simple. It's really basic economic supply and demand. But we want to make out this ruse and make hedge funds out to be the bad people. Now, listen, there are plenty of bad people in hedge fund spaces, but not all of them, right? There's plenty of bad people in financial services, but not all of them. If y'all been rocking with me for a minute, y'all know I talk about some of those things. And those things should be called out. But when you start to follow the narrative that Robin Hood's for the, the small guy, which they are, and I am for... I am for the basic mom and pop retail investor 
being able to have a fair share, right? Being able to get to the money and investments in a really easy way. But we also have to recognize that when you get a whole bunch of people on a forum like Reddit, that skews the point, that skews things. Now, I was actively tweeting about this. Matter of fact, let me see if I can pull this up and show y'all. One of the questions I always have about Reddit and their people, right? you don't know who the hell they are. Nobody knows who they are. And so if you don't know who they are, you really don't know who's actually motivating this, right? And I don't really see anybody in these committees talking about that. I saw one guy mention it. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can find that tweet. Let me find that tweet. Let me, let me share it. Let me share, let me share the screen with y'all real quick. All right, as I'm sharing the screen with y'all, I want to say what's up to Tiffany. How you doing, Tiff? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope everybody is good. Just let me acknowledge y'all. Marco, what's up, brother? How you been? So Tiffany's here. It's the evening where she's at. <laughs> Afternoon where she's at. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Hey, Adrian, how you doing? What's the weather like in the shy? All right, so getting back on track here. So I was, I tweeted this out. So here are some of my tweets. Let me find, right, here we go. So it's, it was rep Josh Gottemeyer. I'm not sure where he's from. He's the only one that I heard ask the question about the, the identities of the Reddit army, people in Reddit, right? Because again, nobody knows who these people are. And so, but the committee overall still hasn't exactly asked who these people are, right? And in, in Reddit and the Wall Street community, they don't know if these are pros who are looking to do kind of their own, I don't want to call it insider trading, right? But their own manipulation for their own profit and purposes, right? We don't know if it's Russian bots. Nobody has talked about that. Again, we already know that there's foreign interference in elections. Why can't there be foreign interference in the markets? But instead of looking at the whole landscape and all the possibilities, we say, no, we're going to look at all of all of the hedge fund people. And I mean, I think that's easy, right? It's kind of lazy. It's intellectually lazy at this point. And the reason I feel it's intellectually lazy at this point is because there's always this this narrative of the rich versus the poor. And sometimes it's right, but most time I think it's just, again, lazy. I mean, we all know that there are systemic racist problems in this system. People a lot of times won't say that flat out. Now, I will, it's clear as day. You can look at many of the laws. But we also have to factor in and acknowledge that we also have great opportunity opportunities right here, right now. Talk about Marco. I've known Marco probably. Marco, how long have I known you? Over probably 20 years at this point. Where Marco's a tailor. Marco is always well dressed, right? I used to work at one of the the big, the big um the, the big fashion stores here in Philly downtown. So he has that he has that reputation of always being dressed, and he is always well dressed, right? He makes me look like a slob. I'm just not in the suit, y'all. I wear sweatpants and shirts all day long, but he's been doing this for over 20 years. When I met him, what I met him, he was in business, right? So he took his, he took his passion. He took his skill and he applied it to a business. Nobody was stopping him from doing that. There was no, there was no uh, anti Marco police out there saying, no, he can't go into business, right? He went, and did that on his own. Everybody can do that. Everybody has the ability to make those choices. Now, I'm not trying to get super deep into different um, social economic issues, so issues as it relates to having parents in the home, not having parents in the home, because we all know those are real things too. But for the most part, everybody has an opportunity to do their thing, to be who they want to be, no matter how small, or how big. If you just want to rock a hot dog cart, that's cool. If you want to, if you want to start a Deaton Watson, 
you can do that too. Right. But I think oftentimes many of those that are elected officials like to pander to the people and they don't want to keep it real with them. That's why I would never, I would never make a good elected official. I would never make it. Uh, just trust me. I would, I've worked in politics, around politics, been treasurers for many elected people. You do also have to kind of play to your base as well. Sad to say, but it's true. But again, we get into this narrative that, oh, only the 1% can do things. Well, there's a reason why the 1% is the 1%. If you look through nature, there's this thing called the 80-20 rule, right? And we see it through everything. So like 80% of car traffic will only drive on, say, 20% of the roads that are available in your town. And this will go up and down in proportion on different things, right? It Look at the NBA. Do you only have about 1% of the athletes that are really, really good and at the top of their game? By the way, they're also the ones that make the lion's share of the money. So there's, there's always this thing of who's better, who can do things better, who competes better, who trains better, who studies better, and then ultimately who makes more money. That's a thing throughout everything. If you study it, like if anybody here is into investing, like when you look at the Fibonacci ratios, that's kind of part of that. Those patterns exist everywhere, even in society, even when it comes to making money. So again, some of us are able to make more money because we can process ideas quicker. We can execute ideas quicker. Some of us can't. That's just life. You can't really be mad at that. But again, I see Congress really perpetuates that and really plays to it and just doesn't give it, you know, a real, have a real conversation with it. And I get it. I get it. It's it's very nuanced. It's, it's a tough, it's a very, very tough thing. It's a very, very tough thing. I think I told you all the other day, right? And I'm, I'm not, I'm on to something. I'm reading Reginald Lewis's Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? One of the thing about him <clears throat> and this guy, he wasn't rich. He didn't, he didn't come from a silver spoon or a trust fund family, but he was able to do multi-billion dollar deals all the time with the law school. Why? Because he studied hard. He positioned himself well. He, he was serious about what he was doing. That's always going to be the case, no matter if we are in a capitalistic society, a socialistic society, a communist society. It's always going to play out like that to a certain degree. Well, some people, well, some people, um, fall through the safety net? Absolutely. Will some people get get picked up for nepotism and other things like that? Absolutely. Right? And I'm not trying to make um, any excuse for that, but what I, I am trying to say is when we look at our legislative body and they just basically give us nonsense, it's like, come on, y'all. Y'all can do better than this. Y'all can do better than this. But anyway, Maxine Waters says she's going to start targeting hedge funds. Uh, I don't think that's the place to go, but cool. That's the way they're going to rock. But there's going to be more trials about that. Again, I'm always just dismayed when I watch these these congressional committees hearings. It, again, I feel like they're an awesome waste of time, and they're never really, really going to look at the real data of what's truly going on. All right, so let me take a pause quick, real quick and say, what's up to people that just joined us? Uh, Mr. Robert Lewis, how are you, sir? Mr. Love and Purpose. Eric Senior, 1975, BR Moto, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Black and Gifted, I like that name. Uh, Nathan Nathan Jean, I think that's how you say it. Press J2, how are you? Ralph Turner, Martin Wary, how are you, sir? King Crumley, uh, Lady T Diva, how are you? And DJ Flexen, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so Marco said, 20 years, started at Versace. He's from Logan. Now, um, for those of you who are not from Philadelphia, Logan is a, a what I call, uh, some people, uh, it's a it's a working class slash middle class neighborhood, or at least it was in the 80s, and then it kind of went down. But it ain't Beverly Hills, folks. It ain't Beverly Hills. All right, so Adrian says, I want to yell at some people so loudly. Don't let your oppression make you miss opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. And again, going back to Reginald Lewis, right? He never let the stigma of being black. He never adopted it. 
again, we already know what the media plays out to be to be black. We we already know. So he never accepted it. And he said that well, he didn't say this, but he felt that he was just as good, if not better, than anyone else. I would say that's the same for everybody, right? We all have a special gift, talent, or skill that we can tap into. And the powers that be oftentimes like to try to play the puppet string master and placate that. So, because I know you're probably wondering, like, why is he talking about politics and then talking about Reginald Lewis? So, I just wanted to connect all that to you for y'all. I don't know, Marco. Some parts, some parts of, of Logan are definitely hood. I used to be on Carlisle Street a lot um, back in the day when I was a kid. Kid, um, those, those, that those houses were nice. Those houses were nice. But anytime you can still have nice homes and have um, poverty mindset, and people be the residents of those homes. So we always had to be conscious of that. Nicole, no, how you doing? And Proverbs 31, hello, hello, hello. Happy, happy Saturday to everyone. Thank you all for joining. Do me a favor, share this out with someone who wants to learn more about finance, more about money, more about taxes and stocks. Um, we get into it every Saturday. Matter of fact, I'm here twice a week, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and Saturdays at noon or noon-ish, right? Because I think I popped on at about at about 12, 10-ish or so. 12 to this or so. All right. So as I promised, we are going to talk about Warren Buffett's new positions um, that he's taking on. If anybody follows Warren Buffett or don't know who Warren Buffett is, he's basically this old guy who started investing in the 1950s with about 10 grand, started investing as a kid. His dad let him get a uh, stock brokerage account and was able to do anything he, to do some things. He wasn't a silver spoon kid, but his dad was either a senator or, or definitely a senator. He was a senator or a congressman at some point, right? So they definitely were not bottom rung, um, but they definitely weren't the top. They were squarely middle class um, growing up, and he was able he was able to make some things happen. And so he took that ten thousand, and now that ten thousand is worth billions of dollars, right? Let me see. Let me see how much is Warren worth. Let me see how Warren how much is Warren worth. I want to say fifty billion or. 60 billion, um, a whole lot of billions. Uh, but let me pull it up real quick. Now, as I'm pulling this up, I want y'all to remember a while ago, a while ago, we talked about reviewing Warren Buffett's annual letter letters. We are still going to do that. And I believe I want to say that we'll start that next week. And the reason why I'm picking next week is because Warren Buffett's next annual letter is due to come out next week, February 27th. So now's a good time to start it. I hadn't forgot about it. I know y'all probably thought I forgot about it, but I hadn't forgot about it. There's a lot of jewels and gems in those. And so I'll do probably a mixture of talking about those on our lives here and also doing some broadcasts within the Finance Rebel Academy, my group here on Facebook. So if you're not in the group, go ahead and join the group, share it on, search it on Facebook again, search it on Facebook, Finance Rebel Academy. All right, so let's say what's up to some of the people before we get into this next thing. What's up, Richard? How are you? Oh, getting warm. It's about 23 now. At 23, that's that Mike Jordan. Uh, Chicago's getting hit. I think we're supposed to get some more snow on Monday. Oh, boy. But I can't complain. Hey, Katisa, how you doing? Happy, happy Saturday. Yeah, bro, it's been a long time. Larry Turner. What's up, man? How you doing? All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Marco. Appreciate you. All right. So Warren Buffett took that $10,000 and now it's worth $84.6 billion. Billion with a B, folks. It's that other B word. Billion with a B. It's one of the richest, one of the richest men on any day, of the, any day of the week. I think he's like in the top five, something like that. But he took that money and he became an avid, avid studier of money, finance, and economics. And not only did he study, he also implemented what he learned. So study's good. Implementation, execution and implementation matters also, folks. All right. So you need them all. Again, it's part of that kick. Hey, Angela, how you doing? Happy, happy Saturday. All right. So let's let's talk about some of these moves Warren just made. All right. So Warren's been all over the news. 
And y'all know I talk about Warren B a lot. And so I figured uh, this would be a great time to talk about it. This would be a great time to talk about it. So I can't stay on too long with y'all today, folks, because y'all know y'all keep me here all day long. I ain't had no vittles. But um, I got taxes to do, y'all. It's tax season. And tax season is off to a weird start. As you all know, tax season started on February 12th. Um, so we got a little bit delayed, but it's not ending early, right? There is no extension this year. All right, tax season is going to end on April 15th. So far, as they said, there is a group of congressmen that are lobbying the, the IRS to extend tax season, but nah, they don't need to. Everybody can file an extension. So listen, if you can't get your taxes in order and get them in play by April 15th, if you are a regular citizen, all right, March 15th, if you are an S corporation, if you can't get everything intact or in order, you can file what's called an extension. So don't forget that. Don't forget that. You don't want to file your taxes late um, because you will get a fine or a nine filer fine on it. And the tax on the IRS is the IRS's interest rates, which they charge on everything, are worse than loan charge, folks. All right. So just to make sure you file, file your taxes. If you can't file them, file an extension. And remember, an extension is not an extension to pay. It's an extension to file. So make sure that you, if you do owe money, you start paying on that as soon as possible. All right. So let's talk about um, this here, Mr. Warren Buffett. Berkshire Hathaway is the company that Warren brought, I want to say in the 60s or early 70s. And they do, they were a textile company originally, but they changed that and they changed it into basically holding company. And so they do all their investments through it. All right, and so Warren and the rest of his crew with Charlie Munger, they own all kinds of stuff through that company. Everything from Geico to Coca-Cola to, I want to say they own parts of Heinz Ketchup, but we want to talk about some of it. Thank you, Desmond. Desmond's my tax brother right here. Uh, so he let us know up to 25%, right, is the non-filing fee. So you want to make sure you get your taxes in, y'all. Don't play around with it. Taxes are a major portion portion, and part of you becoming financially free, accumulating wealth, leaving generational legacies. It matters. So don't take this lightly. All right. So here, let me blow up the screen a little bit more. Take this down. So Warren B's is top buys. Verizon. All right. He brought up 3.19% of his portfolio on Verizon. He brought Chevron. Ironically, Texas is in play this week, right? Oil is in play this week. It's in everybody's conversation because folks have died in Texas. Last report I saw was 37 people have died. Um, millions and millions of people lost power, water. Um, so, like, that's a bad situation. By the way, remember I just said politics plays a portion in your wealth. That's why you can't afford to let it go. Texas is a perfect opportunity to look at that, but I don't want to go on too much of a tangent. Let's stay on Warren B for right now. All right, Andy View, um, Marshall Clinton, Insurance, uh, and T-Mobile. He brought T-Mobile. That's shocking because he brought Verizon and he brought T-Mobile. Now, he sold a portion of his Apple, right? Sold out about 4% of his portfolio. Sold some of his Wells Fargo stock. Sold some of Barrett Gold. So Barrett Gold is a gold miner, y'all. They dig for gold, silver, and other precious metals. Um, MNT Bank is, again, a bank. PNC for my people in Philly and the Berg, right? I know I got some people in the Berg, right? Pittsburgh. Um, that is here locally as well that they sold. He sold out of that. All right. So why would he do that? Why do y'all think he would do this? Interested to see what y'all thoughts are. I have I have my suspicions right now. These were filed on Berkshire Hathaway's 13F. What's the 13F you all ask? 13F is a it's like a report card that has to be filed with the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. It's like the stock market police police uh police district or police authority. And when you're a big time investor, you have to update your trades. You have to let them know what you're doing, usually on a quarterly basis. So people watch these 13 Fs like a hawk because they want to see what other people are doing. 
And so Warren just updated it. So Chevron, Chevron and Verizon got attention of a lot of people. Now we know oil is still at a relatively low price. It was much lower before. I mean, remember oil hit, they said it hit negative one dollar or less than a dollar, but that's uh, a trick of the overall futures market. But it was below 20 bucks for quite some time. And then now it started to make its way up. A lot of oil companies will make more money as the price of oil goes up because they're able to make more profits. They tend to make less money, oil companies that is, they tend to make less money when oil prices go down. So let's see, let's see. Who else is here? I see some people are asking questions. Ah, oh, my my YouTube nemesis is here, my other tax sister. <laughs> What's up, Lashonda? Um, everybody follow Sundra. He, she is the home biz tax lady, so she's another one of my tax sisters. I'm trying to catch Lasandra on YouTube, y'all, but she keeps leaving me in the dust. Um, recently, I cracked 3,000. Um, matter of fact, I want to thank y'all because I asked y'all to help me on Wednesday push past, the, I think I was at like 29.88, so I pushed past that. Thank you all who helped share and subscribe to the channel, so I appreciate that. Now I'm at like 3,001. I don't know why my channel moves so slow, but anyway, Lissandra be kicking my butt and she talks trash about it at the same time. So we have a good time talking about it. All right, so Ms. Edith's here. Hey, Ms. Edith, how you doing? Happy, happy Saturday. Hey, hey, hey. All right, Desmond says, I think Apple got delayed on the car production. Yeah, car production is not going to happen for quite some time, but I think Apple will definitely be in the mix. Um, is that why he backed out? No, I think he backed out just to reallocate to some of these other sectors, but I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Oh man, Jose still in my thunder. All right. So Jose, you got it. So he took his position in VZ and T-Mobile because of 5G development and utilizing utilization increases. No thoughts on that round. Well, I think the thoughts, so Jose nailed it, right? I would also say AT&T is positioned in that in that space too, but he picked Verizon and he picked T-Mobile. Just if y'all are thinking about this, right? So 5G is the new technology that's coming out basically for wireless transmission of data. Supposedly you can transmit way more data over 5G um, than what we currently have. And that's starting to roll out. China has some of it, it's starting to get here in the US. The new iPhone um, has that capability of of transmitting in 5G. Supposedly it's a game changer, y'all. Supposedly it's a game changer. Um, let's say what's up to some folks on IG real quick. Kay Landis, how are you? Brad Models, Nick Nick Seven, how are you? Ethan, how are you? Mentionables, how are you? Um, what's up, Preg? How are you? Um, K Knitters 101, how are you? Or Knitters 101, how are you? Plant Based Thick, how are you? Um, uh, Sanku Motors, I hope I said it right. All right, Brad, you asked what was the name of the list? What list are we talking about, Brad? And Desire Wander, how are you? So, yeah, Jose nailed it, right? So, when we look at going back to the list, I'll, I'll pull us back up on the screen. I'll pull us up on the screen. All right, so Brad, we are talking about Warren Buffett's um, new portfolio changes. And so his top buys were Verizon, um, Chevron, uh, Ambiview, Marsh McLennan, and T-Mobile. Those were his top buys. His top sales were Apple, Wells Fargo, Gold, which is um, Barrett Gold, m and Bank, and PNC Financial Services, or PNC Bank, if you are in the Philadelphia area. And so, again, Verizon makes sense. T-Mobile makes sense, even though I think T-Mobile is trash. It makes sense. They're definitely going to, they're definitely going to um, benefit from five G. They're probably going to see more growth. They're probably going to see more growth in their customer base because of five G. They're probably going to also be able to increase prices and fees on certain things as well. So I wouldn't, I would not be surprised about that at all at all all right so 5g is coming it's here they're rolling out new towers 
Um, it seems like China is kind of winning that race right now, but the United States, never to disappoint, will come on fast in the back end because they have plenty of money and they have a lot of the expertise and knowledge. So that will be a thing, a thing. But again, like I said, Warren Buffett started from 10K. 10K now is worth over $80 billion. How does somebody do that? A lot of it, a lot of it is education. A lot of it is also opportunity. When you think about when Warren Buffett came up, again, we're starting in the 50s. You got to go through the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and now we're in the 2020s. And what was the common thing through all those years? Stock market was rising. Stock market was rising, but I wouldn't give all that. I wouldn't give that all credit to Warren. He's also an in value investor. Now I know some of y'all probably don't even know what a value investor is anymore. That's all y'all thinking about is Bitcoin and GameStop and just how everything just runs through the roof like a hundred percent in two days, right? Nobody, nobody thinks um, doing research is good anymore. I had a kid and I shouldn't call him a kid, but he was a 20 something millennial tell me that old fashioned research doesn't matter. Old fashioned met metrics don't matter. If a company's making money or not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Cracked up. If a company's making money or not, it's always going to matter. Why? Because if a company can't maintain profits and pay payroll, pay the rent, pay for supplies, they won't have a business. They might be able to stay afloat for a while, but the jig will be up sooner than later. Please know that. Please know that. All right. So I thought there was a couple other things that were really, really interesting when I started to look at um, this report by, from Mr. Buffett's company. And so I wanted to show you all this, show you all this real quick. Warren's top 25 holdings. All right. My apologies for everybody that's watching on IG and listening to the podcast um, later on. All right. So, all right. These all come from the 13F. And we just talked about the 13F. All right. So to stop Apple, Bank of America, Coca-Cola. Now I want to take a quick brief pause. Remember we talked about sectors. Was it last week in industries? Do y'all see this here? The sectors, right? Got to pay attention to those things. All right, got to understand it. So we got Apple, we got Bank of America, Coca-Cola, American Express. What is KC? I don't know. Oh, 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 right, Heinz. I mentioned Heinz before. So Heinz Ketchup, Verizon. Um, oh, Moody's. He owns Moody's. Moody's is a company that basically does bond ratings. And what's a bond rating? It's when a company or a city asks people to lend them money. And this is their, they do the credit ratings for people like that. All right, USB. Um, First National Bank of Cincinnati. All right, Chevron. Uh, DeVita, DeVita Healthcare Partners. That's interesting. Toronto Communications. Bank of New York Mellon. GM. Uh, let's see, who's that? Uh, Verisign. Verisign is a tech company. Handles all electronic signing. Ambiview. Again, that's healthcare company, Merck, um, Visa, Bristol Squire Mid, oh, excuse me, Bristol Myers Squibb, Bristol Myers Squibb, Liberty Sirius. Okay, he on Sirius XM. Hmm, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Amazon, Snowflake. Okay. Now, this is interesting to me because I remember years ago, Warren Buffett would not invest in technology at all. And he has a good amount of technology in his portfolio now. So things do change, folks. MasterCard, Wells Fargo, um, Stone Co., and Kroger's. So he's got a good mix from finance, consumer staples, tech, um, telecom, energy. He's got a, he's got a good mix. You would call this a well diversified portfolio. But those are some of the things that Warren Buffett has invested in. All right. And so Jose comes in again with another drill consistency with his investments, right? So I asked the question what do y'all think is the tool 
or the reason why Warren Buffett's been able to to um, win and get so much money. All right, because let's just see what his investments. He started out buying insurance companies, then continued leveraging his profits to acquire more and more opportunities. But Jose kind of talked about it, but didn't really go super duper deep on it. So insurance companies. So insurance companies are key to Warren Buffett's success. Why are insurance companies key to Warren Buffett's success? Because they have this thing called float. All right. And so when you look at an insurance company, they have a float, right? That's the money that they have left over to take care of claims. Oftentimes it's not used. And when it's not used, they, you, the company can put it to use in other things. They can invest in other things. Usually, it's usually, um, more, more modest things. But although the money isn't warrant, he still gets the benefit from it. The companies get the benefit from it. So that money goes directly to the profit. That makes sense. So when people pay their premiums, right? Everybody doesn't put in a claim. So that money goes, that money goes out. All right, Lysandra says she's good. She's probably got to go do some taxes or something. So thanks for stopping in, Lysandra. Appreciate you. All right, so Warren, Warren, you know, is able to take, and his team is able to take the money and float and leverage it. And it's not his, or at least it wasn't his, right? And that's why their their cash pile up has, has grown so much. And that's why Warren's net worth has grown so much, right? Uh, so that, that's all I got today, folks. Let me know if y'all got any questions or anything about this. I'll stay on for a little bit longer, a little bit longer. We're hitting the one o'clock hour. I told you, I do have some taxes to do. If anybody has any questions or wants to join my community offline, be sure to text me at 215-974-0058. Again, 215-974-0058. Nine seven four zero zero five eight because we're having we're having ongoing communications, um, keeping these conversations going. Also, if you're on Facebook, join my join my Facebook community, which is the Finance Rebel Academy. Just search for it, Finance Rebel Academy, and I'll let you on in. Let you on in. Uh, hey, Bina, how you doing? Yup, hooked on Kim two five one. Yes, um, slow and steady wins the race. Absolutely. Yep, snowflake is fire. Oh, hey Ginger, how you doing? Yep, he put so Warren Buffett absolutely pushes index funds and ETFs and wants to hold it long, right? So the other part is Warren's not necessarily looking at. He's not worried about. He's not worried about GameStop. He doesn't care if GameStop goes up a million percent. He doesn't care because it's not a part of his overall investment process. He wants to invest in the things that he buys and he typically buys them forever. Now, there's another thing. There's another reason why he's successful as well with his companies. All of his holdings are not stocks. Berkshire Hathaway actually buys companies. Flat out, they'll buy companies lock, stock, and barrel. And they'll usually leave the management team intact to run the place. So it, it's a little misleading um, sometimes when you just talk about when you just talk about his stock portfolio and the gains that he's made. He's also a business owner, right? Berkshire Hathaway is a holding company. So if you and let's say 10 of your friends wanted to put together, let's say, I don't know, a thousand bucks just to keep the math simple that you got 10 grand. And you found, I don't know, a small tax business that needed a capital infusion. They said, here, here's five grand. Do some marketing. We now own 50% of your business. Just an example, folks. As that business grows, because they got it, they took branded business, put some systems in. That 5000 now invests into a business that's worth, I don't know, let's say $5 million. A lot of y'all like to go to these big these big uh, box stores that I hate, I hate them. Um, but they made money. They made money. And so you can you can invest a little bit of money into a small business if you get lucky, and it could really quadruple. Uh, actually, quadruple is small. It could grow by a thousand percent 
and you would see the result of that and the benefit of that and your returns. So just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. All right, so Barry Henson asked the question, says, I'm a new jack to this. Where should I start? Well, I have a couple of I have a couple of uh YouTube YouTube playlists. I'll throw them in the chat where you can start. One's old, still good. It's old. Don't laugh at me when I put it out there. Um, but it's good. Then I also have another playlist that says um uh invest in what you know. And so I'm really big in just starting, right? This isn't the end all be all, but just to get started, buy things that you already invest in. If you've got a bunch of iPhones, maybe, maybe this is not investment advice. All right. These are not stock recommendations to buy or sell. But if you own a bunch of iPhones, you buy Apple products, maybe, maybe just maybe you look at investing in Apple. If you love to buy Nike sneaks, maybe you buy Nike. Right. Or if you love Jordans or the Air Maxes or whatever it may be, you can go there. So I'm going to throw a couple, a couple of playlists in the chat. You can start there. Any questions you might have, again, feel free to text me or hit me up. Um, either way, uh, 215-974-0058. All right. So the first one is investing basics. See here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me grab the link. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and everything. I think I still say that now. <laughs> so yeah, let me get the link so you can start there. I'm gonna throw that in the chat. It's free. I guess what? Just because it's free doesn't mean that you can't. You can just rely on me you still got to do your research still got to do your homework this is just the beginning it's a journey though right it's a total journey so you can start there and i also have another one another one as well i think that first one um the investing basis has over 20 videos they're not that long though they're not that long and i talk i talk about the real mechanics of the markets not just how to buy and so stock, I want you to understand what's really going on behind the scenes when you when you are buying and selling stocks, when you are actually making an investment. I mean, it's okay to make money. It's great to make money, actually. Don't get me wrong. It's it's great to make money, but it's it's also important to understand. It's also important to understand uh, the mechanics behind why you're making money. Because I see a lot of people, they get lucky in the trade. And they think they're the next Warren Buffett, but they don't realize that they got lucky. All right? They don't realize that they got lucky. So a couple more questions and I'm out of here. So um, Ginger, I think index funds are great. Um, they're usually low cost. You can buy an index fund that tra tracks the whole market. So y'all know every Saturday when I do Wealthy Conversations, I talk about my market rundown. I cover the S&P 500. So the S&P 500, there is an index fund for that, which is, we're talking more about the mutual fund. Um, we're also talking about the ETF. I prefer everybody to do ETFs. In my opinion, I think they're better. Just my opinion. But you can buy an ETF that covers the S&P 500. Um, you can buy an ETF or an index fund, right? I'm using ETF and index fund synonymously. Um, you can find one that just invests in banks. You can find one that just invests in China or Africa, or Brazil, or, uh, you know, India, they're all out there. So you can get pretty, you can get pretty fancy with what kind of investments that you have. But I, I do like them. And so by the way, going back to well, so Warren Buffett preaches index funds and holding, because he knows the average person is going to keep it funky, which is lazy, and doesn't really want to do the work. I know that's not talking about y'all that's with me today, right? Y'all want to do the work. Y'all want to sacrifice. Y'all want to read some stuff. Y'all ain't going to be like the rest of the folks that just want to complain and never want to take any action and learn some stuff that they can actually implement to their wealth building process. Y'all about that business. Y'all about that action. But most people are not, sadly. 
And that's just, that's just human nature. And I'm not judging anyone. I'm, I'm not, you know, putting anyone down. People go through their own journeys, their own cycle. So one day a year ago, they were like, well, I don't want to do it or I'm not interested in doing it. I'm just talking about doing it. And then after a while, they'll watch, you know, see, there's something here. Let me take this serious. And so you can always tell the difference between somebody who's serious and somebody who's just talking. We want to be the serious people at all times. All right. So let's see. Ethan Powers, already PC, bro. I got to run. I'm new and we'll be checking. You got more? Please do. Please do. Love to have you. AF uh, Nikki, I think I'm saying it right. Yolanda BG, how are you? Welcome, 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 y'all. But uh, if there are no other questions, Dante Myers, how are you? So you said dividend profit. What do you What do you think? I like dividends and I like profit. That's what I think. I'm not exactly sure if that's actually getting to the heart of your question, though. <laughs> um. We did a show, we had an old show about dividend research uh, a couple of weeks ago. I tell people to use dividend ETFs to start finding good dividend companies or companies that pay a dividend. What is a dividend? A dividend is typically a portion of the profits that a company pays out. Most times it's a portion of the profit. There are some companies that'll pay, that'll use their cash or use debt to pay dividends. But for the most part, it is a portion of the profits that a company makes. Now, remember, when we are investing in stocks, we are actually investing in companies. In order for a company to pay a dividend, typically they have to be what? Profitable. They got to be profitable. So profits still matter, y'all. Profits still matter. All right, but Dante, is that what you meant? Are you talking about like dividend, dividend stock companies or what, what exactly did you mean? I don't want to leave you hanging. I don't want to leave you hanging. Any other questions while we're waiting on Dante? Again, happy, happy Saturday, everyone. I appreciate everyone being here. Always honored when you always show up. Hopefully, I'm giving you guys good value. Um, but I'm also interested to know what are some other things you all want to talk about, want to learn about. I told you we're going to start going and die or diving deep into Warren Buffett's annual letters from Berkshire Hathaway. Um, so if you get a chance, start reading them in. Start reading them. And in and, 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 um, advance of that, I'm sure I will probably find a day or two to go live in the Finance Rebel Academy and start talking about those as well. Abe hey, Deuce, how are you? Peace to you as well. All right, folks. So Dante... Um, Oh, there we go. Uh, so it depends on what kind of what kind of investor you're looking to do, right? And so, what kind of investor you are, are actually is dictated by what your goal is. Many times, people want to just get started in stocks just because they just want to make money. That's cool, but what's the real goal? You could have a wealth fund. That's fine. How long do you want to create wealth for? Is it for this generation? Is it for your children? Is it for your children's children's children? Who's it for? Is it for a college fund? Is it for retirement? Right. Then that'll give you some direction as to what you're investing for. People that are retiring or plan to retire for soon want to invest into dividend stocks because they're looking to replace the income that they make every day. Right. So if they're, if they're looking, let's say they bring, if they bring home 5,000 a month, Right. And they know in retirement, they might, they might have social security. I'm personally not banking on social security, but they'll have social security, right? They might have a pension. They might have a 401k. And so then you got to figure out how do you turn all that into, you know, meet that 5,000 a month or close to it that you might need. So you don't go broke and have to, you know, become a greeter at Walmart. Nothing wrong with being a greeter at Walmart. The only thing that's wrong with that is if, you don't want to do it. You've worked hard all your years, all, all your life, all your career. And so if you are going to work at Walmart as a greeter, that means that you didn't do something. 
Yep. Dante, I mean, not Dante. Uh, Abe, you get text. For my community, though, I tend to stick to the basics. Everybody wants to do the, the, uh, to be fly, fresh and bold, uh, with, with everything that they do. But nobody wants to talk about the basics, the boring stuff, the fundamentals, the budgeting, the savings. Those are all things that will really save you high in the long run. Options are cool. I actually buy options. I'm not, I'm not the, the super, um, a guru at them. I won't claim that, but I understand them. And, but there are plays, there are other option plays that I still have to learn and master. And I don't think option plays are good for the beginner. I think people should understand the market first, right? Basics of buy and hold and then move out to, you know, day trading, swing trading, options trading, futures trading, forex trading, any of that. But yeah, we'll let him chop it out with you. Um, Barry Henson asked what personal reading. I would read The Richest Man in Babylon. It's one of my favorite books. Let me see if I have. So I would read The Richest Man in Babylon. I keep saying I'm going to do a list. All right. So I got some books here. Getting out my books. Let's see what I got here. I would read this book also. How Money Works. Right? Great book. Can go through it with your children as well. It's very graphical in nature. But it breaks down topics really simple. Topics like... Calculating and analyzing net worth, topics like interest rates, topics like arbitrage. That's more advanced, but it's good to understand it. What's a primary and secondary markets? Primary and secondary markets, they're talking about IPOs and pre-IPOs, right? What's an IPO? IPO is when a private company becomes public. So we see those all the time. They get a lot of heat. They get a lot of flavor in the markets, but most people don't really understand the mechanisms that actually drive it, all right? Derivatives. Again, this is all here in this book, How Money Works. Financial instruments, financial reporting, um, smoothing earnings, corporate accounting. I mean, I know it's not lickety split. It's going to take some work, but it will be well worth the investment. This is another book I recommend as well, Pyronomics by Dr. Claude Anderson. Powernomics, great book. I'm black. Most of my viewers are black. So I talk about money from a black perspective. That's why I say cultural competence around money is important. It, 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 we, we don't have the luxury of just getting money for the sake of money. We have to also put it in context with where we are at in this country and in the world. A lot of folks just want to get money so they can buy stuff. Uh, that that's not my motivation. I could care less about buying cars, clothes, and jewels. I'm more so interested in us being financially literate, educated, and savvy so we can fund our schools, all right? so we can feed our babies. Another book, Our Black Year. Again, these aren't books, you know, to necessarily tell you or and teach you about money, but they're money related as it relates to black folks. Black fortunes is another one. I don't think I have that right here. Hopefully somebody is writing these down. Maybe somebody can throw them in the chat. Black fortunes is another one. That's the story of, of like the first six or seven black folks after slavery to become millionaires. So we've been millionaires y'all for a long time. Um, there's some other books. I, I said the richest man in Babylon. I'm just kind of going off the top. Um, richest man in Babylon, Black Fortunes, Powernomics, Our Black Year. Uh, I'm trying to think about some more. Um, but you know what? I'm going to do. I'm going to do a video on that, and I'll I'll do an actual video where I say the best money books. Um, that people should read. And then I'll probably do another one, Best Money Books, 
black folks should read because our issues are not the same as everybody else. But I think everybody knows that. Um, Nicole, no, Closing the Wealth Gap. Is that a book? Or are you talking about the paper that I wrote a couple years ago? I did write a piece a couple years ago talking about closing the wealth gap or destroying the wealth gap that got a good amount of traction. People enjoyed it. People enjoyed it. Shelby Lindsay, ESQ. One of my favorite cousins. What's up, cuz? How you doing? Hope you are well. I ain't seen you in a while. I miss you. All right, folks. So that is the end of today's work. Y'all know I got to get me some vittles. I be hungry. So I'm going to eat y'all. But listen, I gave y'all a text number. Join in. Join in the community. I'm also joining the Financial Rebel Academy. Next week, we're going to start breaking down and going through Warren Buffett's annual letter. So if y'all here, y'all rocking with me, make sure y'all start looking at Warren Buffett's annual letters. He's been doing them for decades. There's a lot of gems in them. If you are really serious about increasing your financial IQ, definitely get on board with those and start reading those. We'll start with the newest one and then we'll figure out working our way back as well. All right. So Jeffrey Mills says, take care, stay safe and check in with your peeps. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, everybody. Everyone have a great day. Again, I'm humbled that you're all here and I will see you next time. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.